decide whether I want to cross my legs or I feel like my knees are up in my oh. face. <laughs> I do. I, I'm small, but I have long legs. I know. I was looking at your legs. <laughs> oh boy, you don't care. You got some gams on you there. <laughs> oh, I must give you a white balance too. I did it. Oh, I you did, did it. All right. Okay. I've worked with Fred a lot, and I always have to tell the new photographers, you know, uh, you have to shoot below the shoulders. I don't want any of this. Right. I don't want any of that 60-minute stuff. Right. And uh, I don't care how you shoot politics true. and spot Absolutely. news. Absolutely. I lasted so long uh, interviewing actors and people in the arts is that they trust me, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I'm not going to put anything on the air that's going to make them look bad. Right. And, sure. and we're rolling? Okay. Melanie, welcome back to Dallas. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bobby. How much time did you spend here when you were making the film? Oh, God, I was here about six, seven weeks. And you shot? Two months. And you shot in Dallas. Tell me where all you shot. We shot in Plano. We shot um, the houses there and supermarket, uh, not supermarket, like, you know, out, outdoor malls. And uh, we shot in Mesquite at Horn High School. And we shot at Denton, the police station there. And we shot at a football field. I forget where the football field was, but we were, we were everywhere, it seemed. Which band, high school band, did you use? Oh, I don't remember the name. Oh, well, that's okay. We, Maybe we'll I can find, find out, out later. Yeah, they were yeah. great. They were. They were great. And, uh, of course, the local people will be so interested yeah. in, in where the, yeah, we'll find that yeah, out. Yeah, we've got to find that out. Um, but um, uh, I must tell you that um, I really enjoyed the film as an adult, and I cannot say that about every teen film that I see. Now, was this a conscious thing that, that you wanted to aim it at the teen audience, but you wanted also to bring in other people? I think it was more, I mean, I spoke to uh, Berndt Eichinger who bought the film and financed it from Constantin Films and, you know, Bernie's about 53 or whatever and he said uh, he bought it for himself, you know, he bought it for, you know, it, it's, it appeals to older audiences but thank God it also appeals to the younger audiences. Now because it's set in a, in a high school, you know, it's sort of legally blonde meets all about Eve or Private Benjamin meets All About Eve or something, but more Legally Blonde, I think. It's, a, it's just a great high school movie, but it's smart, it's sassy, it's edgy, and a little like the, like the audience with Clueless or Election. They were stories that took place in high school, but, you know, kids will love it and grown-ups will love it, too. I love the fact that it was inspired by All About Eve <laughs> because I love that film. Genevieve, jean you know. <laughs> yes. um, but... Um, the, the younger kids may not know that, or no. will they even care? I don't think they'll care. I mean, I think it's a good story. It's like the, the, the star girl gets taken down, you know, Barbie doll gets taken down, and, and what happens to her, you know, and, and do we care, and do we like who takes her down, or are we rooting for her, you know? So it's a good story. I love the final shot, and I'm not about to give it away, but... Was that always the way it ended, or did you shoot different endings? No, that was in there. That was, that was how it ended. That is just a real, what we call in the news business, a kicker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to go out good. <laughs> <laughs> you were not the original director. So tell me the, how you came into the project. I knew the writer, I knew the producers. I had had a project that I was rewriting a film that they had made in Germany for America and I was supposed to direct it and then they decided not to make that film. So I'd had a relationship with them and they called me about four days into shooting and said that they wanted to make a change. And uh, they told me about it and I said I'd read the script, I'd read it a year ago and um, had had an opportunity to go up and try to get hired at that point. And I said, oh I know the script, you know, okay. And they, you know, sent me some footage and next thing I knew I was on a plane. How then was your vision different from the direction it started? Well, the producers just wanted a, a big 
you know, accessible commercial comedy. And I think what they started seeing in the dailies was, it wasn't that there was anything wrong with it, it was good. It was just a little more arty, a little more quirky, and I think poking fun more of the people in Texas. And I just wanted it to be real, you know. I just wanted it to be as real as possible because the material was tricky. You could make it over the top or you could kind of make it a real story. You know, I just saw Private Benjamin again, and Goldie Hawn's performance was so real and emotional. But she was playing, you know, Jewish princess, and you know, kind of like what our Starla is, you know, the the head cheerleader and the star of the school. And but the more real the work is, you know, the more we as an audience will feel at the end of it. And and that was just more more what they had wanted, you know, like the movie My Best Friend's Wedding. Julia Roberts tries to destroy her best friend's relationship. It's not a great thing what she's doing, but you love her and you're rooting for her. And it was just real good work. So that's kind of what they wanted. And I said, yeah, I can do that. That's the way it'll work, you know. Could this story have been set in, say, like New York? I think it could have. I think it probably could have been set anywhere. I just don't think it would have been as much fun. It just, you know, there's, you get more kind of showbiz or something out, a little, little bit more pizzazz out of it being in Texas. Um, New York, it, I don't think it, you know, like Ed, the, the love interest is New York. It's more, you know, I don't know. I think it, it was perfect how it, how it was that took place here. I must say also that Jane, who played Starla, I think she captured the Texas accent, or at least this regional accent. You know, in Texas, we have about five or six different accents. And um, I'm not a native Texan, but um, I, I always say I'm a Hoosier-born Texan. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but when I first came to Texas, the, uh, I was fascinated by the way Texans in this area would say, I'll try to emulate them, how are you? I mean that little you, uh -huh. rather I say, how are you? Right. You know? And the first time that Jane says you, or Starla says you, I thought, I wonder if she's from this area. Wow, she's from Vancouver. Jane's from Vancouver, but we did have a dialect coach on the set that was making sure that you know she had it down because the parents uh, were both from Texas. So you know you have to make sure that everything is blending well. Well, I'm sure it helped her being in this area where she was hearing right all the time the sounds all yes. the time. Yes, yes. But I, I just had to mention that that I, but mostly when somebody does a Texas accent, we all cringe. You know, it's so bad. <laughs> um, okay. You. This, of course, is not your first time to direct. You started directing when you were doing thirty something. That's right. I started directing on 30-something. And uh, you've directed many, many things. How, uh, how satisfying is directing as opposed to being in front of the camera and all the uh, attendant adulation that goes with that? I think directing, you know, it's probably been said so many times, but as an actor you use, your, your, you use who you are, your emotional life, you know, you create a character, and that's an incredible journey. As a director, it's almost like everything, what I found was everything that I was ever interested in somehow comes to play as a director, not just the acting, but like I love remodeling homes and like you look at floor plans and directing you're looking at plans to build sets and I was in the marching band in high school and when you're in the, with the composer and the orchestra's there and they're scoring, it's like you can talk about, you know, what bar of music you want a little different or, you know, I always did photography as my hobby, and the camera lenses were the same as the lenses on the Panavision cameras or the Aeroflex cameras that they use. You know, a wide-angle lens or a telephoto lens on your still camera does the same thing on a movie camera. And, you know, suddenly it was like, oh, I knew that, and, and then the acting completely played in. So it was sort of a little bit of everything I'd ever kind of been interested or done in my life, I found out as a director you use. But one thing as an actor, you know, you get hired for a job and you work with people that you may or may not know. As a director, you can hire people that you might have loved and, you know, respect that are in different fields and you can sort of put your team together and kind of 
pick your group, and that's that's a really exciting thing because film is is such a collaborative effort, and there's so many people involved with. I mean, the director has its name on it, but you know, th there's so many people that went into making that movie, and uh, it's great when you can have a hand in picking who those people are. Of course, now you have credits, you bring to the table a, a, a wealth of experience. But when you were first directing, not so much the fact that you were a woman, but the fact that you were an actor turned director, did you sometimes feel that the crew and some of the people were, oh, here's a, an actor turned director? Did you feel that? I, I never worried about what they thought of me. I just knew that my acting experience could help. I could save a lot of time on the set because I knew how to talk to the actors. You know, a lot of times directors don't know how to talk to actors. I mean, a lot of great directors do, but there are a lot that don't. And they'll waste take after take after take because an actor won't know what they want them to do. So it's taking longer and longer and everybody's getting more frustrated. And some of the best directors I've ever worked with do three takes. Herbert Ross, Costa Gavras, Paul Mazursky, you know, they don't do, they don't spend the time. You know, they know they got it, it's good, they move on. And um, it doesn't always have to be, you know, something that takes forever. So I, I didn't worry about that. <laughs> I said, no, this is a plus. And the actors will know it's a plus because we're speaking the same language. <laughs> and the crew will know because we'll get out earlier. <laughs> I remember Shirley MacLaine told me one time that I was saying, you always say you're going to work with Warren and, and you never do. She said, when Warren can learn to make a movie without doing 60 takes on it, you see, now I'll do a movie with it. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> Are we okay? Oh, Good. that's your beeper. Oh, okay. I thought it was the camera. What? Battery going out. Okay. We're still early? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, one of the things that, <clears throat> one of the things, Melanie, about your background that I thought, the next time I see her, I have to ask what it was like and what was your experience working with Andy Kaufman? Oh boy, on heart beeps. You know, Andy, I didn't deal with him that much. He was lovely. He, whenever he had free time, he was sort of like in his trailer meditating. He said he would go and he would meditate. I remember he was just a very internal guy, very nice. You know, he meditated a lot. I meditate. But I remember, oh, Andy needs quiet, you know. He was sweet, but he was very serious about what he was doing, you know. He was really just into his work. He wasn't one of those actors, you know, you're hanging out on the set, joking around, hanging out with the actors. Not really. He sort of kept to himself, but was a lovely guy. And then when he got in front of the camera, you never knew what would happen? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it turned on. It's amazing. Like a loose cannon, or? No, he was, the, the part in that film, I mean, he was a robot, you know, so yes. he was kind of contained. But, you know, he was just great at what he did. But, you know, off, I mean, when he wasn't in front of the camera, he was just quiet and sweet. And, kept to himself. <laughs> I know, it's like they made a movie about him. I was like, wow, what's the movie going to be about? When you were in high school, what was your burning ambition? I wanted to be an actress. You knew? I had gone on a class trip in eighth grade. We went to see Cyril Richard play Bottom in A Midsummer Night's Dream at uh, the American Shakespeare Festival in Stratford, Connecticut. And that blew me away. And on the bus ride back, it was like a seven hour bus ride back to Pennsylvania, I said, I'm gonna be an actor. I'm gonna go to New York and I'm gonna learn how to be an actor. I just loved it. It was high comedy, you know, but I loved it. I said, that's what I wanna do. And was there ever a time then when you were a struggling actress that you thought, oh, I, I may as well just cash it in. I was lucky. I got work at the, I went two years to the American Academy and then I had a manager, Bill Tresh, discover me. He had Sissy Spacek, he had Carol Kane, he had uh, Christopher Walken, Mary Beth Hurt, Eric Roberts. There was this wonderful group of actors that he had. He got me in to meet Paul Mazursky and I got cast in Harry and Tonto when I was 21. I started working right away. I, 
in my early 20s, I just got film after film after film. So, you know, there were periods, you know, in the middle then, you know, that there might have been lulls, but really at the beginning it was, it was something. Is it 30 something that people remember most? I, well, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, you get on a hit TV show, and especially a show like 30 something that sort of went to the core of so many people, but, um, yeah, I think so. But then, you know, I'm meeting people and they remember me from Girlfriends or Sticky Fingers or Car Wash or Missing. So, you know, there's lots of stuff. It's You've great. had such a, a variety of acting experiences. Yeah, yeah. Well, Melanie, I don't want to detain you. I know you're on a schedule, but thank you so much for your time today. And again, congratulations on the film. I hope it does well for you. Oh, me too. <laughs> and uh, I think the people in this area will really be intrigued to see it. I hope so, Bobby. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's get a two-shot roll. Yeah. If it were offered yeah, a good and one. And if it was, yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. I mean, there are plenty of people that are doing that. It's, it's hard, you know. You're a woman, you get a little older, and you know, it's like there aren't that many parts. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's refreshing when you do, uh, have you seen Crush? Have no. you seen that movie? You know it's it's three older women. I mean, they're oh, not, right, not that they're Oh, right, that's right, 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 yeah. right. Andy Dow, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I want to see that. And uh, yeah, uh, I just sat there and I was so happy for them uh, because, uh, uh, you know, there's not enough. And then uh, Sissy Spacek, you know, uh, getting this role yeah, and great. nominated, and she was so wonderful. So good. I interviewed Sissy Spacek when she was a teenager, just her, it, her first movie, actually. Oh, my God. You know, God. because she's from Quitman, yeah, Texas. Yeah, I know, I know. And um, so I got a call, and... Uh, uh, Are you going to ask me questions, too? Or? I, well, I think... Uh, Your role. Oh, okay. Question. Yes, I'll do the question, and then you start to answer, okay. and I'll wake you up. Okay. Where all in this area did you shoot? We shot in Plano, we shot in Denton, and we shot in Mesquite. And we, sh we shot at a football stadium, which I don't know where we were. <laughs> and, uh, we'll find out. <laughs> okay. Because I think people would like to know that band. I was curious to know. Your lead actress, Jane McGregor, where is she from? Jane is from Vancouver, and uh, she just, I felt she just really nailed this Texas thing. She had, her accent was great. I mean, she just really, really fit right in, I thought. Okay. Um, you came into the project after it had already been cast. Tell me how. All right, let me start. How did you come into this project? The movie had been shooting about four days when the producers called me up and said that they wanted to make a change and would I read the script? And uh, I did. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. You had to kind of walk a fine line between portraying this part of Texas without really making a caricature, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, I wanted, I just sort of steered everybody into trying to be as real as possible. You know, I felt the story itself makes it a statement, you know, on the clothes and the house and everything. That's so. good, okay. Um, I love the fact that the writers were inspired by All About Eve, Betty Davis, and Baxter. Yeah, oh, it's great to be making something like where you say it's All About Eve in high school. Um, I don't know how many kids will know All About Eve, but we sure will, <laughs> and you know, hopefully get that part of the audience in too. Let me change the shot up okay. on this because I don't know if it may be a jump cut. Oh, okay. And, and we all understand jump Jump cuts. <laughs> okay. When you started directing, not so much that you are a woman, but the fact that you were an actor turned director, did you feel resentment from crew or other actors or anyone? No, I didn't really. I didn't think of it. 
I just tried to put my acting experience into directing the actors, and uh, hopefully they would appreciate that enough. <laughs> <laughs> the crew would get out early. <laughs> Um, could this story be set in another location, say in New York City? I think it could be. I think, it, except it wouldn't be as much fun. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you find that most people want to talk with you about 30-something, that's how they remember you? Yeah, I think a lot of people, or at least they'll say that they, you know, they love the show. Or, but yeah, most people remember me from that. Although, I know I've done a lot of other things, but people do comment <laughs> okay. on that. You did a movie with Andy Kaufman. What was it like being around him, and what was he like? Andy was. I guess not what you think him to be. He was very quiet on the set. He was very sweet. He was loving, but he went into his trailer. You know, he only came out when it was time to work. He didn't kind of hang out and have fun with everybody. Okay. When you were in high school, what was your burning ambition? My burning ambition was to be an actress. I loved it and I saw Midsummer Night's Dream in Connecticut, and I was just blown away. That's great. You know, I think when people know young what they want to do. Okay, uh, Fred, I think that's got it. Yeah.